just going to wait a couple seconds for folks. And again, if you need a media kit, we do have the media kits up there. If there's any questions on spelling, let us know, and we can make sure we give the spelling uh, proper names of folks afterwards as well. Okay. Okay. I'd like to thank all of you who are here today. I want to thank my Board of Supervisor colleagues for their vote yesterday for unanimous vote to establish the Office of Immigration and Refugees Affairs. For short, we call that ORA, O-I-R-A. The ORA will coordinate with county, state, federal departments and agencies along with community-based organizations in cooperative partnerships to help facilitate communications, bridge gaps, and eliminate some of the barriers refugees and immigrants, immigrants face when arriving in a new country. When refugees arrive, their most basic needs are missing. They're essentially homeless. They need food, housing, transportation, education, medical services, and jobs. Yesterday at our Board of Supervisors meeting, we see many expressions of public support and stories from residents here in Orange County on why this office will be instrumental in helping immigrants and refugees now and in the future. With more than 930,000 of our Orange County residents being foreign born, our immigrant population is strong, growing, and instrumental to our county's success. As a county, we must play a pivotal role in helping refugees and immigrants integrate successfully into our community. This new office will ensure immigrants and refugees have access to the basic services and resources they need under one roof. The Aura is an example of our county's efforts to help all our residents thrive and make Orange County stronger, healthier, and more inclusive. Our next steps are going to be operating, sorry, operationalizing, not a word I created, the office. We plan on hiring a director 
for the office with the input of numerous community-based organizations who are already working with our immigrant and refugee community. In that regard, we have drafted a proposed mission statement and vision, which we want them through workshops to work over and make certain we all agree on where we are going. I would thank the community-based organizations who assisted us in developing the foundation for the Office of Immigrant and Refugee Affairs, including the Council on American and Islamic Relations, the Asian Americans Advancing Justice, the Coalition for, Coalition for Human, pardon me, Humane Immigrant Rights, and the Public Law Center. I'd also like to thank my staff and Vice Chairman Doe's staff who joined with me in helping to move this item forward to lead the charge to establish this office. And I particularly again want to thank my board colleagues for making Orange County the first county to create an office of immigrate, immigrant and refugee with a unanimous vote. Now I'd like to invite Van Tran, Chief of Staff from First District, Vice Chairman Stowe's office to say a few words. Van? Thank you, Supervisor. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. As Vietnamese Americans watched the heartbreaking images of Kabul International Airport back in August of 2021, after the withdrawal of U.S. and NATO forces in Afghanistan, we relived the trauma and deep pain felt this very month, 48 years ago, also known by many in this county as Black April 1975 marking the fall of Saigon and the tragic end of the Vietnam War. I stand here today, a former refugee, an immigrant, serving as the Chief of Staff for Vice Chairman Andrew Doe, who, like me, is also a former refugee from Vietnam. We know what it means to flee a violent and oppressive regime, and we understand what it means to live as refugees. The many opportunities we were presented to build a wonderful life are a testament to America's greatness. According to a 2020 report by the Pew Research Center, California, as you know, is home to the largest share of immigrants, nearly a quarter of all newcomers to this country. California is also one of the top resettlement destinations for refugees fleeing political and civil unrest, or the effects of climate change. Although immigration has slowed nationwide, California remains home to large communities of new, long-settled immigrants. California is also home to a long-settled Southeast Asian refugee community. About 36% of all Southeast Asian Americans in the U.S. live here in the state. Orange County, the largest, the sixth largest county in the United States, is also recognized as a refugee impacted county by the California Department of Social Services. In 2019, nearly 30 percent of Orange County residents were foreign born. And of that segment, one in five immigrants have resided in the U.S. for 10 years or less. Targeted for efforts for California's diverse communities are also critical. As Latino and Asian American households experience linguistic isolation in higher proportions. In 2019, 28 percent of Latino immigrant households and 27 percent of Asian American immigrant households were linguistically isolated. We intend to apply the best practices learned in forming this new Office of Immigrant and Refugee Affairs, also, named, also known as OIRA. The OIRA will serve as a central hub for coordinating services, resources, and advocacy efforts to support Orange County's immigrant and refugee populations per state and federal law and requirements. For the first 90 days after the refugees' arrival, their assigned resettlement agency will guide them through the necessary steps, including a health assessment, short-term housing, and how to apply for state 
and federal benefits. The goal of the OIRA is to work with the resettlement agency on a transition plan for when the 90 days end by continuing to assist immigrants and refugees with services such as case management and connections to resources. These programs and resources already exist. We are just centralizing everything to make it easier and more effective for immigrants and refugees to access services. Clients who are equipped with the correct tools are more likely to become self-sufficient and can better support themselves and their families. The first office will be located in the County Community Service Center or the CCSC in the city of Westminster in the first district. On a personal note, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the members of the uh, Board of Supervisors as a former refugee and an immigrant for your leadership in taking the initiative in creating this office so that hundreds and thousands of refugees, former refugees and immigrants, can become American citizens and contribute to this great country and our county. And with that, I'd like to take this opportunity to invite Supervisor Vincent Sarmiento to come up and share a few words. Thank you so much. Buenos dias. Um, I'm Vicente Sarmiento, and I, I, I want to first start off by saying the reason I'm so casual and wearing jeans isn't because I think there's a lack of formality to this moment because it's a historic, <clears throat> it's a historic day, but uh, I stand in solidarity with uh, victims of sexual assault. And so that is something that we uh, recognized yesterday, but today's the actual day. So anytime I get a chance to wear my jeans, I do. Um, so I want to begin by first saying uh, thank you to Supervisor Chafee and, and Supervisor Doe for leading this effort, but really to the entire board uh, and, you know, for uh, putting this forward and making sure that it was unanimously supported. There was a lot of hard work, and let me just recognize the teams of all the offices that did a lot of work on this. But really, I think it's the community that uh, came together to make sure that they compelled our office and the board uh, to make sure that this was uh, something that was done. Uh, it is historic, and for me, um, you know, it's, it's, it's very personal because I am an immigrant. I'm an actual immigrant. So I arrived in Santana. This was the port of entry for my family in 1965. So I am the only uh, Bolivian-born uh, supervisor, uh, and I was on the only Bolivian-born mayor of a large city in, in, the, in the U.S., so this is especially significant because when our family arrived back in 1965, much different county, right? Uh, no services, no support, a very small immigrant population, but we knew uh, how important it was to make sure that we uh, brought our culture with us, our ideals with us, our dreams with us, and eventually made a life here. And so, um, you know, as somebody who arrived very young to achieve, uh, uh, you know, uh, this uh, position to be able to stand an office up is really important. I think that, um, you know, what's, what's extra important is that, you know, we already serve a very uh, a large group of immigrants. As was said before, nearly a third of our county is foreign born and even a larger number, uh, you know, are, you know, are immigrants uh, and, and, you know, have challenges like many other immigrants do. Whether you're documented, whether you're undocumented, uh, I think it's important for all of us to understand that the county already provides services to a large immigrant population, and that's a really good thing. Um, you know, we don't distinguish many times, you know, where on the spectrum um, uh, of immigration status you are because we know how vital it is for our, our community to be healthy and served. So I want to just, you know, say that, um, you know, the county, like any other place in the country, has had some challenges with, uh, with immigrants. Uh, you know, there still is hostility out there. There still is some, you know, negativity towards immig uh, immigrants. Uh, and that's something I hope this office will rise up and uh, make sure we, you know, we uh, address and we make sure that we're humane to one another, we're um, civil to one another, and, uh, you know, provide resources in a way that is befitting of who we are in Orange County. Uh, you know, I know that, um, you know, people who did some heavy lift, I want to thank Masi, my friend from CARE LA, our friends from Chispa or Chidla, and, um, and Chispa too, because I think they helped as well. 
but Viet Rise and um, the Harbor Institute and you know many, many others that I think. I want to just reach out to you and speak to you just for a moment. Um, this is just the beginning. You as community organizations are going to determine the success of this office. I think if all of you stay engaged, all of you make sure that it's a, an, uh, an office that's effective, efficient, productive, and is meeting the needs. Um, we don't want this to just to be another office that is simply there. Uh, we want it to be active. We want it to be really um, out in the community. So, you know, we know uh, that, we, that the need is certainly there. And as somebody who represents, I think along with uh, Supervisor Chafee and Doe, an area of the county that's especially impacted uh, by many needs of immigrants. I know in District 2, the district I represent, we have, you know, 34% uh, of our residents are, are, are Latinos. Um, and, you know, so we know the needs are very high, so we're going to continue to, you know, make sure the services are provided. So this is a great day. It's exciting. I think that my hope and my promise is that as this office develops, it's going to continue to evolve and meet the needs. This is the first step. So I know there were some, you know, some other adjustments and amendments that were recommended by, uh, by the community and the organizations that were uh, with us yesterday. We'll get there. This is, you know, we first have to open the doors, and that's where I really do thank, um, you know, my friend from District 3, uh, Supervisor Chafee, for making sure that he put this on there because it is something personal to him. He has one of the most diverse offices and staffs here at the county, and I'm very proud of, of that. And so, um, you know, I just want to say this is something that's going to hopefully evolve. We're going to make sure that it's a success, but we need, we need you organizations and you leaders, activists and, and, and you know, uh, advocates in the community to make sure you uh, compel that interest and compel that need. With that, I just want to say in Spanish, just briefly, es un día muy histórico hoy día. Uh, es la primera vez en este condado que se abre esta oficina para los inmigrantes y refugiados aquí. Van a tener asuntos, van a atender asuntos que son tan críticos para el apoyo, acceso de oportunidades, uh, otros recursos que se necesitan, pero esto es el primer paso. Entonces, estamos dando un paso muy valiente para poder ayudar a, a los inmigrantes aquí, muchos de ellos latinos que viven aquí en el condado. Yo, como inmigrante, uh, entiendo por las experiencias que he vivido y mis familias que es bien, bien necesario tener esos esfuerzos y ese apoyo, porque sabemos que todavía existe la hostilidad, el sentimiento anti-inmigrante, entonces espero que esta oficina va a ser mucho para poder ayudarnos. Entonces con eso les invito que nos ayuden, nos apoyen, que sea esta oficina un éxito, porque va a depender mucho de ustedes, que vengan con nosotros y nos digan qué son los asuntos que necesitan atender. Entonces, de parte de mi, de mi oficina mía, mis puertas están abiertas. Queremos trabajar con ustedes, colaborar con ustedes, y con eso, uh, pues, les invito que nos ayuden. Um, so, with that, let me go ahead and uh, introduce the president of Uplift Charity, a good friend here that we just uh, made, a wise data boy. Good afternoon, everyone. It's great to be here today on this historic day, as the supervisors mentioned. Um, Uplift Charity was started back in 2006, and at that time, we were not a resettlement agency. We became such in 2021, right before the Afghan arrivals started. And in 2006, what we found right away, because all we wanted to do was go out there and see who we could help, people that were recently, you know, became... Uh, without a home or somebody that was about to be evicted from their home. We just wanted to go find the people that we could assist. And what we found was most or many of them were immigrants. And we also found some resettlement agencies that needed assistance. So I could see that this office could have been extremely helpful to an organization like ours and the resettlement agencies back then. And then, you know, moving forward to today, as we have resettled Afghans, uh, that have come in, you know, throughout the country, maybe more than 80,000, something like eight to 10,000 in California, and then we have our share in, in Orange County, not as many. What we've found is that the quicker that you can get them access to different resources, including the children, getting them tutoring, getting them, uh, getting them into school quickly, um, the parents and people that can work, uh, getting them some support, finding them work, the quicker you can do that, obviously, you can become you can help them to become self-sufficient. 
the longer that it drags on, that you find them resources and you're trying to do it piecemeal. And by the way, the County of Orange helped us tremendously during the times when we had the Afghans first come in. Um, it was remarkable as just a regular person that had not really dealt too much with county government. I was um, you know, really happy to see that. And I see some of those folks here today as well. So you know, what we found is that the folks that you can get access to services quickly will become those that are self-sufficient quickly and will not be using government assistance. And then uh, most recently, we've been helping uh, Ukrainian uh, refugees as well. And um, there's quite a few of them here. If you want to talk more about that, we can. But for today, I just want to thank you all and thank particularly the, uh, the county supervisors for their vision and for making this happen. I think it's going to really help people in the future, whether they're refugees, immigrants, or others as well. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Masas Fulati, Deputy Executive Director from CARE LA. Sir, you're on. Good morning, everyone. My name is Masih Fulati, M-A-S-I-H, last name F-O-U-L-A-D-I. I'm with the Council on American Islamic Relations, where I serve as a Deputy Executive Director. I want to start off by thanking Supervisor Chafee and Doe for authoring this motion, uh, Supervisor Sarmiento for being here today, and uh, the rest of the supervisors for voting for this unanimously. As an immigrant who came to the United States at a very young age, as my parents were fleeing the uh, tail end of the Iran-Iraq war, um, I've had the pleasure of going to elementary school in Anaheim, going to uh, high school in Garden Grove, uh, attending un the University of Irvine here for my undergraduate degree, and being in California for the majority of my life, and being in Orange County for over 25 years of that. Um, this was a historic moment that is going to benefit so many uh, individuals like myself and my family. I remember when we moved here, my dad would work 80-hour weeks, would come home extremely exhausted uh, just to support us. Now he's a thriving business owner uh, with many properties across the county where Primarily now, he rents those properties to uh, unhoused individuals to make sure that they have the support they need. My mom came here as someone who could barely speak English and now teaches at the high school that I went uh, to school. Um, and those are just two very personal stories of mine, of immigrants um, coming here, needing support, needing to set up a foundation, and then giving back to the community. And that's really what the Office of Immigrant uh, and Refugee Affairs is going to uh, empower and enable the county to do even more. Uh, this county is one of the most diverse uh, in, the, in the whole United States. Over half of the uh, children in this county have one immigrant parent, meaning this uh, office is going to impact almost half of the families here in Orange County. Forty percent of business owners within the county are immigrant. And that, again, it shows the economic power, the taxes, the contribution uh, that immigrant communities make here. And so as we work to operationalize um, this under the leadership of Supervisor Chafee, we look forward to working with Latino, Asian American, Pacific Islander, Muslim, uh, South Asian uh, populations to make sure that this office is representative of the diversity here um, of the immigrant community in the county and making sure, again, that we are working with the various agencies uh, within the county that are already doing great work. I want to give a shout out to Antran, who's here from the Social Services Agency. I know how huge a role that they played uh, in the resettlement of Afghans here. And what I'll um, end with before turning it over to our partners here at ChairLab is that there are so many opportunities to be had in this moment. Uh, CARE as an organization is serving as a program administrator for two major statewide uh, initiatives to support Afghan youth and support Afghan legal services. Those are opportunities at the state and uh, uh, federal level that the county can also be taking advantage of. And so this will allow the county to generate so many resources um, for immigrants in the county. So with that, um, thank you so much for being here today. And I'll turn it over to Apolonio Morales from the uh, Coalition for Humane Immigrant Rights Los Angeles. 
It's always hard to follow uh, Masi because he says everything that needs to be said. <laughs> so thank you for that. Uh, my name is Apolonio or Polo Morales. I'm the Director of External Affairs with Chirla, the Coalition for Humane Immigrant Rights. And uh, this is a historic moment today. This is something that when I heard <laughs> passed, I was listening to it on my phone while I was driving yesterday. And when I heard that five to zero vote, um, it really, really struck me um, because it is entering into a new phase here in Orange County and in recognizing and providing that respect and dignity to the immigrant community in a way that is going to be laser focused on helping and supporting. And so that's very important to, to Chirla. It's very important to our membership and our, our folks in the community. The Latino community is something that is going to be invaluable. And so thank you to Supervisor Chaffee, Chaffee uh, Supervisor Doe, and Supervisor Sarmiento, all the supervisors that voted for this to, to take this first initial step in the right direction. Thank you for that. Um, as Chirla, we provide legal services to the community, you know, folks that are aspiring to become citizens and just need a little help filling out those applications or DACA renewals. Uh, we help with providing community education and outreach to the community. And in those, th that engagement, uh, we encounter a lot of other immigrants in the community. Uh, and it's always helpful to say, you know what, you who you should talk to? You should talk to CARE, you should talk to Uplift, you should talk to uh, any number of organizations that are providing these services. But having an Office of Immigrant and Refugee Affairs here in the county is, is going to facilitate that, right? Um, when we had the opportunity to be able to help out with translation uh, for the Afghan community, you know, and identifying who speaks Pashto and Dari, right? <laughs> who are the experts in this language? That uh, resource already exists within the community here in Orange County. And so by having that streamlined approach, by having that engagement with different community groups coming together, making sure that this office is pinpointing folks where they need to go, it makes everybody's job a heck of a lot easier. So I want to recognize that, you know, as folks are looking at, you know, what uh, issues immigrants face, healthcare is an immigrant issue. Housing is an immigrant issue. Education is an immigrant issue. And as Masio said, this county is very immigrant, and we are acknowledging that. And that is something to be celebrated. I want to say also that we want to continue to work with the supervisors to strengthen this office, to make sure that the needs are met, to make sure that you know, any challenges that may be faced or anything uh, that comes about, a new crisis, a new uh, migration flow, all of these issues can be addressed through centralized services in a way that is going to make more sense for the community, more sense for the immigrant community, um, and really amplify our effectiveness in the long run. Because we believe that an investment in the short term can reap very positive results in the long term. And so as California, as Orange County, that belief in investing in immigrant communities is something that will pay off in the future. And we truly believe that. So I just want to say thank you once again to the supervisors. You know, we look forward to having those meetings and, and, and uh, attending those workshops to be able to provide uh, some further insight and input on how this office uh, develops and uh, you know, unfolds into the future. Thank you so much. Our next speaker is a refugee from the Ukraine. I hope I say your name correctly. Irina Sobyanina. Please join and welcome. Hello. My name is Ina Sabianina, and uh, um, let me tell you my story. I came with my daughter nine months ago. Um, my daughter is 12, and she has autism, so it was like a, a double challenge for us. Um, um, we were forced uh, by war in our country. It was very suddenly. We were not uh, ready for, for this uh, step, for this move. We just... Uh, just took our two bags uh, and uh, and have to go because we had no choice. Um, I knew that nobody are waiting for us in this country. I had a lot of doubts and fears, like uh, mm, what will I do there? Um, how I will find a job? Because I wasn't sure if my English enough uh, to communicate with people. I had some basic uh, skills and. Um, but we, we took this risk, we came, we had nothing but two bags of our baggage, and um, I was surprised uh, 
very much by people and by government uh, because uh, there are a lot of programs uh, and which uh, really helps uh, us uh, to make this our first steps uh, and uh, it helped us uh, um, to keep motivating to do something more and we were not in so much big stress we had a we had a power um, to continue and I, I believe that it's very important. Uh, I was able to start uh, to study something new, and uh, now I'm proud uh, to say that I'm a part of uh, Uplift Charity organization, and now I'm a member of this uh, great uh, uh, organization. I can see uh, how it's important. I can see this refugee, how they start, and how this is a great difference what happened with this family in a month or two with help of our case managers. And um, uh, I'm also happy uh, to be very useful, and um, now I am uh, make a difference for other people who we need. I also interested in growing uh, now my position in this company as a digital marketing specialist, and I will not stop. I all the time have a lot of training. I want to grow. I want to, to grow. I want to help other people, and I also to grow as a professional. So I believe uh, many people, especially from Ukraine, just don't know about others, uh, we are very motivated and we just need a little bit support and somebody who can show us the, way, the direction where, where and how to go. And uh, with this support, everybody would love to, to grow and to become independent as soon as possible. <coughs> so... I, and we, for sure, will pay back for this great country and for this, um, this people by, uh, by paying tax, uh, by uh, becoming a professional and hem help other people in uh, different directions and different ways. Thank you very much. Our last speaker sought refuge in Orange County as a refugee from Vietnam. Ona Nguyen, can you come up uh, and share your experience with us, if you please? Thank you. My name is Anna Nguyen. À, tôi đến Mỹ theo diện bảo lãnh cùng với các con của tôi. Here, uh, was sponsored together with my uh, children. Và uh, sau đó thì con trai lớn của tôi đã tham gia vào quân đội của Mỹ. My son joined the army of the US Army. Dạ, uh, sau 4 năm phục vụ trong quân đội uh, và trở years, về từ chiến trường Afghanistan. Uh, he came back from Afghanistan. À, thì cháu um, bị uh, người ta gọi là bị hội chứng khủng hoảng sau chiến tranh. And he got uh, PTSD. Và thực sự tôi rất là khó khăn trong thời gian đó bởi vì tiếng Anh của tôi uh, chỉ hạn chế trong việc uh, giao tiếp bình thường thôi. It was a very difficult time for me because my English language was very limited to a daily use only. Và ngoài việc phải chăm sóc uh, về sức khỏe về tâm thần cho con của tôi thì, son, thì tôi cũng phải cần tìm cho cháu một cái chỗ nào đó để họ có thể giúp cho cháu ở trong cái việc uh, uh, có những cái quyền lợi của một người bệnh. I also have to help him out to uh, get the people to help him regarding to his uh, sickness. Và rất may mắn là tôi đã được một người quen giới thiệu đến văn phòng của luật sư à, nghị viên Andrew Đỗ. And it was lucky for me that uh, uh, one of my friends introduced me to the office of county supervisors Andrew Đỗ. Và ở đây tôi đã nhận được một cái sự giúp đỡ rất là quan trọng và cần thiết và tôi cảm thấy rất là mẹ con tôi được an toàn và có những cái sự giúp đỡ cần thiết và quan trọng cho cháu. And it was a very big help uh, uh, that I received the help from the, this office uh, to help me and my son. Uh, thật tự tận đáy lòng tôi muốn nói một lời cảm ơn là nhờ văn phòng cộng đồng mà tôi đã tìm được một cái sự giúp đỡ rất là quan trọng. Deep in my heart, I deeply appreciate it. Uh, I did, did get all the assistance uh, from this office, community office. 
À, và tôi cũng có một người con khác nữa, cháu bị bệnh tự kỷ. Uh, I also have another son who had uh, autism. Và tôi cũng lại chạy đến văn phòng của luật của nghị viên Andrew Đỗ để xin giúp đỡ nữa. And also I uh, did uh, went, went to uh, office of Andrew Đỗ and get help from him. Rồi uh, sau đó tôi trở thành uh, uh, một người mẹ đơn thân thì gặp rất là nhiều khó khăn trong đời sống về vấn đề y tế và tất cả những cái giúp đỡ khác thì tôi cũng vẫn luôn luôn có một cái nơi tin cậy đó là văn phòng cộng đồng của nghị viên uh, Andrew Đỗ. As a single mother, I do need a lot of help and I did receive a lot of help from the county supervisor Andrew Do office. Và sau đó um, dựa trên câu, câu chuyện của đời sống của tôi, tôi cũng đã giới thiệu cho những người quen biết những người bạn bè, ai có những cái nhu cầu cần thiết tôi đều giới thiệu họ cho đến uh, văn phòng của nghị viên Andrew Do thì họ cũng đều được giúp đỡ rất là xứng đáng và 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 rất là hiệu quả. I also refer a lot of uh, people who needed help uh, with the same situation and uh, they did get assistance and help from uh, the, lo- the office of Andrew Do and, uh, and uh, all of them have been end up with a very good result. Một lần nữa, thầy, uh, về mặt gia đình, tôi xin cảm ơn tất cả mọi người, đặc biệt là văn phòng của cộng đồng của nghị viên Andrew Do. Uh, once again, I would like to thank you to all of you uh, that who have helped me, especially the office of uh, uh, Supervisor Andrew Do. Yeah, ở nơi đây tất cả mọi người có thể nhận được cái sự chỉ dẫn rất là tận tình và rất là là cần thiết cho những vấn đề mà họ gặp phải trong đời sống. Uh, from this office, so I believe that everybody who need help can get all the assistance regarding to his uh, daily life and if anything needed. Thank you very much for all of you. Again, I'd like to thank all of you for coming here. If there's one word I'd like to stress, it's called patience. We want to do this office correctly. We want to staff it with the best people we can and to learn from our friends in the community how the best way we can to establish this office. We're not going to copy anybody else. We want to do the best we can and be the best office in the nation of this sort. I would close with a personal remark. A few decades ago, I served as a Peace Corps volunteer in India. After serving, I went through many nations on my own, just a pack on my back, to see what other cultures and people were like. What I discovered, in spite of differences in culture, religion, race, even government, there's a commonality among all of us. We all want to be safe and secure. We want food for our family, housing, an opportunity to succeed and prosper. And when we can, we want to be free to express our views. And that's why so many people want to come here from countries that don't allow that. They want to be Americans. They want to contribute to our society. They want to be self-sufficient as soon as they can. And that's the purpose of this office, to facilitate that, move forward as rapidly as we can, to not have to rely on government subsidies and others, and to have the freedom to express your views and live here. With that, we're open for questions. You may ask questions of any of us if you wish. If there are no uh, formal questions at this time, uh, then I would suggest we break up. I'm sorry? The cost? The cost uh, will be probably initially with three staff people. Uh, It will be worked out. My office from our discretionary ARPA funds is contributing $500,000 to augment anything coming out of the county's budget. We want to do this correctly uh, and not be understaffed 
but it will take some time. Uh, I can't give you an exact number. I do know we'll be applying for grants to further uh, the uh, ability of the office to help. If there are any further questions for members of the media, I do have a microphone here. Members of the media? We, we can go ahead and take those offline after the press conferences here. If there's any member of the media with any questions? Supervisor? I think we're, we're done as far as questions are concerned. Please feel free to ask any of us questions. I do this on an informal basis at this point. So thank you all again for coming and being here. Thank you. Again, if there's members of the media that like to do some one-on-one -on -one interviews, we're going to have the Spanish outlets that are going to be over on the left-hand side over here. If there's any questions from Vietnamese media, they're going to be on the right-hand side over here.